Dr. Robertson, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to do this interview, first of all. And, okay. and let me ask you, first of all, um, you know, there's a lot of talk up these days about uh, the world order sort of falling apart. Do you buy this argument? Are you concerned about what's going on? Can you make sense of it? I'm certainly concerned about it, but I'm not sure that the world order is falling apart more than, you know, it usually does. As, you know, thought about what's going on in the north of Iraq or the north of Syria with I with the Islamic State. You know, that's uh you know, that seems to be a fallout from a long persistent uh conflict and uh long persistent grievances. So uh you know, it's just the latest manifestation of it. I'm not sure that you know it might be more threatening uh, to some people, but I don't think it's terribly surprising. And I think, you know, what's happened in Ukraine, you know, why is that surprising? It's already happened in Georgia a few years ago, something similar on a smaller scale. So, I mean, I'm certainly concerned, but I don't see it as something terribly anomalous. You know, at the same time, there's a lot of uh, talk about uh, a possible, perhaps, decay of the West. And especially, there's a lot of talk about the U.S. Uh, losing, if you want, its influence, you know, the world over. Uh, are you concerned about it? You know, I think the United States have faced much more humiliating foreign policy uh, disasters than uh, than they have in the last 10 years. You know, think about the Vietnam War, for heaven's sake. It was an utter failure on a far bigger scale than, than anything, uh, you know, we've seen in the last uh, decade. I, you know, I think that, you know, the United States, there's a sort of re-equilibration in the sense that, you know, the, what happened in Afghanistan and Iraq shows that, you know, the United States miscalculated their ability to, you know, reconstitute uh, political institutions in these countries. And, they, you know, they forgot some of the lessons of the past, I think. But um, as I said, that's happened before. Uh, in terms of the economy, I, you know, I see, you know, the U.S. economy as dynamic, you know, technologically uh, as it always has been. If you were going to ask me who did I think was going to be the world economic leader, the technological leader, over the next step, is I think you know everything suggests it will be the United States. Of course, there's many other countries which are very innovative, uh, entrepreneurial as well. You know, Sweden, Germany, whatever. You know, what happens in China and India, you know, remains to be seen. But I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a believer in this decline of the West thesis at the moment. It doesn't seem very factually based uh, to me. Of course, there's lots of problems in the EU as well. But again, I, you know, it seems to me that they always have been, you know, and uh, I mean, and the bigger picture of the EU is that it's been a terrific success, you know, it's had an enormous political impact, which has been very positive, and uh, sometimes, you know, mistakes have been made, uh, monetary union, you know, in the absence of fiscal union, turns out to be a difficult thing to manage. But then you have, you know, countries like uh, France and Italy, and of course Greece, um, where, you know, the governments have sort of uh, used what you call the extractive model, you know, to, to pass on a lot of benefits to, to different elites and different privileged invested interests. Um, how, how do you get those back, you know, you know, for those countries to become more competitive and more open? Well, I mean, I wouldn't think France was, I mean, I would, I would think France was rather different from Greece. You know, France at least has a very dynamic, you know, internationally competitive manufacturing industry, which, which Greece lacks, as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, I mean, that, I mean, it seems to me that, that that's one of the big issues in Greece is trying to figure out how to create such a such uh, internationally competitive industry. If you thought about the last 30 years, there's been these chronic sort of budgetary problems that have emerged, you know, which, uh, which are somehow, you know, in the past you've never seen countries, you know, which are not at war issuing such enormous amounts of debt. So, you know, and some of that may not be, you know, feasible. And so, so far, democracies in Europe haven't done a great job at sort of getting that under control and getting people to understand, you know, that somebody has to pay for this eventually. You know, we have to pay for it or our children have to pay for it, you know, or we have to default, in which case somebody else pays for it, you know, whoever's holding the debt. So someone has to pay. And, and I guess the politicians haven't done a good job at getting across to ordinary people what these trade-offs are, uh, but you know, uh, I still, you know, I don't see that that's enormously inhibited the economic prospects for the EU. It certainly causes problems, 
but you know, interest rates are incredibly low at the moment, so that at least makes paying the debt off easier than it would be otherwise. So I, you know, I that my view is that you know Greece has lots of problems, you know, which are you know at the at the end of the day political problems about the state and the way that politics works, you know, rather than economic problems. And but I think for, the problems in France, I would say, are a different order of magnitude. You know, you have an enormously meritocratic central civil service in France, and that seems to be a big problem in Greece. You know, the fact that the state has been much less meritocratically organized than would be desirable. How does a country like this change? Well, I think slowly. <laughs> you know, one of the bigger kind of generalizations in political science about that is that transitions, you know, of the type that Greece Greek needs tend to come not necessarily when there's democracy, but when new political movements uh, form outside the traditional political system. Because traditional political players are very used to playing this game. Uh, and it's very hard for, for them to sort of reform themselves. I mean, sometimes it happens, you know. Uh, it does happen, you know, I can think of examples. But, but, but I think the more robust generalization, you know, if you thought about history of the British Labour Party, you know, if you go back into the 19th century, English politics was pretty uh, clientelistic and patrimonial as well. Uh, and even the state was, you know, it's only in the 1848 that... Uh, that the state was finally kind of organized on a completely non-patrimonial basis in Britain. You know, and those reforms went on for a long time. Uh, it took a long time to get there. In fact, it you know, basically took from 1688 until 1848 to, to sort of remove all patrimonial influences from the English state. So that took a long time. And you know, a lot, lot of it was to do with, with a change in politics, you know, with new political parties, movements coming into the existing system, you know. So so I would say, you know, what you want is, you know, all of this discontent to kind of lead to new political movements, uh, new social movements which can enter politics. And you know, that transition you often see coincides with with a with a, with a transformation, you know, in, in the way the state works. Just reading about Greece in the newspapers and this whole business of the Troika, maybe that's necessary in the short run, but I, you know, from my perspective, that's sort of treating the symptom of not the cause, you know. Uh, so, you know, if you look at Argentina, you know, people respond all the time to problems in Argentina like that, but it's just the problems always come back again. And, you know, and that will happen in Greece too, you know, without reforms in the politics and the institutions. I think just fiscal austerity on its own is not, is not going to solve anything in, in anything other than the short run. So a huge amount of pain is being created but it's not addressing the real problems.